My name is Caleb Dunn, and today we're going to talk about positive and negative selection of thymocytes. So before T-cells become fully developed in the thymus, they're going to begin as immature, small, non-proliferating cells known as thymocytes. And these thymocytes are going to go through a process called thymic selection. So they go through two distinct selection processes that depend on the recognition of their own MHC and the unresponsiveness to self-peptides to prevent autoimmune disease. So these two selection processes are positive and negative selection. So before we get into positive and negative selection, we'll start by talking about how T cells are generated. So lymphoid progenitors that have been made on the inside uh, of the bone marrow are going to travel to the thymus. And inside the thymus they're going to develop T cell markers such as TCR, uh, CD4, and CD8 and CD2. So once these thymocytes reach the thymus, they're going to undergo proliferation or rapid reproduction. But most of the cells that enter the thymus will die by committing apoptosis anyway, but we're going to dive more into that in a little bit once we get to positive and negative selection. And when these cells are beginning to express CD2, but they haven't uh, rearranged their T cell receptor genes, they're going to be known as a double negative thymocyte. And the TCRs of the thymocyte are going to have markers that is a lineage for a specific mature T cell, with CD4 corresponding to a helper T cell, while CD8 will correspond to a cytotoxic T cell. And if the thymocyte uh, cannot produce pre-TCR, which is a complex of CD3 group, and this has a structure consisting of T-cell receptor beta chain, which will be complex with a glycoprotein called the pre-alpha chain, then they're going to also be eliminated by apoptosis if they can't produce this pre-TCR. So the pre-TCR will send out a signal, and the beta chain is going to stop rearranging and it's going to begin more proliferation, more of this rapid reproduction. So now these uh, cells are going to express both CD4 and CD8, which means they have now become double positive cells because now they're expressing both CD4 and CD8. So now these double positive cells are going to travel into the corticomedullary junction of the thymus and there they're going to go through positive and negative selection. So in order to leave the thymus, these cells have to go through positive and negative selection, with positive selection being when the double positive T cells will bind to cortical epithelial cells expressing class 1 or 2 MHC, plus cell peptides with a high enough affinity to get the survival signal, while negative selection is going to happen when these double positive T cells will bind to bone marrow derived macrophages that will express uh, class 1 or class 2 MHC plus cell peptides with a high enough affinity to get the apoptosis signal. So let's say you have a double positive thymocyte and here is your CD8 molecule, CD3 molecule, and CD4 molecule. Now, once you have this double positive thymocyte and these CD molecules are being positively expressed, you have three options with this thymocyte. Two of these options are going to be when you bind the double positive thymocyte to this MHC class 1 or class 2 molecule. So it can undergo negative selection which means that the MHC molecule is going to send the apoptosis signal to this thymocyte and this thymocyte will die. It's going to commit apoptosis. Whereas in positive selection, MHC class 1, class 2 molecule will send a, a reproductive signal to this thymocyte. So now it's going to start making different cells uh, with this being a CD4 helper T cell or it can make a cytotoxic T cell with a CD8 plus molecule. Or most of the cells, uh, the, most of the thymocytes, may not actually bind to an MHC molecule at all. 
And if this is the case, then they're going to die in the thymus after a few days of not being able to bind, uh, to being able to bind anything. And this is going to be known as death by neglect. So once these T cells survive positive selection, now they're going to go further into this corticomedullary junction. And there they're going to encounter macrophages and dendritic cells. And these will exhibit high expression of these MHC cell peptide complexes. So once the T cells pass through, like I said, they're going to encounter these. And if they bind to them, then they're also going to commit apoptosis. They're going to die. So there's only going to be a few of these cells that survive. Some of them, even if they are mature, helper T cells are mature cytotoxic T cells, they may end up dying anyway through negative selection from these macrophages and dendritic cells. So there's also two different hypotheses that can help further explain the signaling that will determine whether a cell survives or dies. So in the uh, different avidity hypothesis, and this will propose that the same MHC peptide complex will deliver both signals for positive and negative selection, but the strength of the signals determine whether a T cell is positively or negatively selected. So let's say, for example, you have this MHC peptide, and it'll send out two completely different signals. So let's say it sends out a smaller signal so this uh, was supported in transgenic mice and that if you increase expression of the same peptide it's going to result in increased levels of T cells but if you increase the strength of this signal and you have prolonged exposure to this signal from the same MHC peptide complex you're going to get a decreased number of cells produced and the second hypothesis is known as differential signaling hypothesis. And this states that different signals are delivered during positive and negative selection. So this was observed using agonist peptides and slightly different antagonist peptides. And with this model, antagonist peptides could deliver signals that will lead to positive selection while the uh, slightly different agonist cells are the only cells that were strong enough to deliver the cell death signal. And the results of this experiment were obtained with CD4 cells uh, that the antagonist peptides could not positively select and the CD8 cells found in a thymic culture. And there were also differences observed in the signals that will direct cross-linking made. Uh, if TCR cross-linked with a CD8 molecule in this experiment, the CD8 molecule would be activated, but the signal would only be a partial signal. So it would only be partially making a signal, whereas if the CD4 molecule was cross-linked with TCR, it produced signals like normal activating signals. And that is positive and negative selection of thymocytes.